Hello and welcome. On the show today, we're actually going to be making water for you to brew your coffee with. Now, uh, you might be watching this and wondering, what do you mean making your water? Uh, and I can understand your confusion. Uh, if you're coming to this with no context, uh, it can be a little confusing. So the short explanation is that uh, water is actually probably the most critical part of brewing your coffee. Uh, it's something you may not have thought about. Uh, you might just go along with the water that you have. Uh, and I'm gonna explain more about this after I show the process, because uh, I just wanna dive in. But water is super, super important. So if you want to have really good quality water to brew with, and you don't wanna like wonder if you're doing it right, follow this super, super simple recipe. Uh, I'm actually just pulling this right from Barista Hustle, so I'm going to link to that below. Uh, it's their recipe. There are actually like a lot of recipes for water. Um, you know, I'm going to get into recipes and water and all that kind of thing after I show you this one. Uh, but follow along with what I'm going to show you, and it's going to make a lot of sense once I get into it. So let's dive in. Uh, for this part with crafting the water, I'm just going to take you kind of over my shoulder here. I think this will be the, the easiest way to demonstrate everything that's going on. Uh, and this is very, very simple. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking distilled water, very specifically distilled water, baking soda, and Epsom salt, and we're going to be making a concentrate solution of minerals. Uh, I'm going to get to this a little bit after I demonstrate this, but the important part of water is the balance of minerals in it. Um, not just that it's water. If you try to brew with distilled water, uh, you're gonna get a gross result. As a fun experiment, you might try that out. It's not good. I'll get more into other water ideas afterwards. Okay, this recipe, very, very simple. Like I said, this is from Barista Hustle. Uh, link below the video to where you can read the recipe. We're gonna measure out 500 grams of the distilled water. And I'm using a jar here that I can seal because we're actually gonna shake it up a little bit. This does kind of want to be relatively precise. I went a little over 500, so I'm just adjusting. Okay. I'm at like 502 there. I'm going to call that good. Okay, and now we're going to add 8.6 grams of baking soda to the distilled water. I'm actually <clears throat> going to use a spoon here because I'm not entirely sure how much that's going to go. So I'm going to tear this out. Uh, I'm using an Akaya scale here, very precise scale. It's good to have a precise scale for this thing. All right, that's two, four, six, seven, eight point two. <laughs> All right, we want eight point six. Again, trying to be very precise here because this is about. This is about like a Goldilocks zone of balance. There we go, 8.6. Okay, so 8.6 grams of the baking soda in there now. Now we're gonna do 25 grams of the Epsom salt. So, let's tear this out. Again, I'm, I'm going slow because I don't know what volumetrically this measures out to. We're at 13, 21.5, 25. All right. So there we are. We've done 500 grams of distilled water, 8.6 grams of baking soda, 25 grams of Epsom salt. Now what we're gonna do, seal that up, give it a good old shake to disperse everything. I may wanna do that a bit more. Um, and now this actually needs to sit for a few hours because as you can see, particulate wise, uh, it's pretty grainy in there. Um, we want that all to dissolve. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna need to sit for a few hours before this can be used. Uh, but right now I'm going to uh, hop back on the camera and talk a bit about why this is important. All right, so there's actually one more part to the recipe uh, I could have talked about it there, uh, but I wanted to come back to the camera as uh, there's a few more things. Actually, point of interest, 
uh, I, I said that this needs to sit around and dissolve for a while. Uh, probably good to keep shaking this up a little bit, but um, going by Barista Hustle's guidelines, this can take uh, a few hours to completely dissolve, and that's fine. The last part of the recipe is you actually take 500 grams of distilled water, so you get another container, um, 500 grams of distilled water, and then two grams of this mineralized water. So this is a concentrate. Uh, and every time you want to brew or create some water for brewing, you follow that guideline. Measure out 500 grams distilled water, two grams of this water, uh, or you know, 1,000 grams distilled water, four grams of this water. Uh, and so that's uh, this makes this makes a nice like easy to create high quality water for brewing your coffee because you can just go get a cheapo bottle of distilled water or if you're gonna do this frequently there are places where you can just uh, bulk fill your containers with distilled water and then you're getting like super pure well balanced mineralized water okay. Let's get into why this is important because I've talked a lot about creating water and those of you who this is a new subject to might be wondering, what the heck am I talking about? Well, water, as I said before, is the most important thing to bring a great cup of coffee. Let's talk about brewing coffee really quick. Uh, so when you brew a cup of coffee, <clears throat> you uh, grind your coffee, you place it in the filter, whether you're, you're doing like a whether you're doing like a Kalita wave and pouring your water over as the water goes through the grounds, the water is saturating the grounds and extracting the water soluble components of the coffee, which is what gives us the taste and aroma in our cup. But what is it about the water that does that? Uh, Cause it's not just the water. It's what's in the water, which makes that possible. And here's where that gets tricky. If, uh, for example, uh, a very easy, uh, easy thing to point at, <clears throat> I live in an apartment and this apartment building adds a lot of chlorine to their water. I can't brew a good cup of coffee with the water from the tap here. Even though uh, living in the Seattle area, we have a really amazing water table, uh, like natural water here is really superb. Uh, I, I can't use the water in the tap to brew a great cup of coffee because the chlorine in it messes it up. Uh, but even if I didn't have a lot of chlorine in it, the water could be too hard, having too many minerals in it. It could be too soft, having too few. These are like common problems in uh, just like tap water for people in homes, apartment buildings, wherever. If you live in an area where your natural water is not great and you in your home are doing heavy filtration, uh, maybe water softening, uh, because the experience of, you know, washing yourself your hands or whatever is much nicer with that. You could end up with water that is too filtered, too softened, has too few minerals in it to brew a good balanced proper cup of coffee. There is, there's kind of a Goldilocks zone of mineral content in water that is necessary to brew a great cup. Uh, I'll link to that below the video as well, so you can check that out if you want to see the scientific details on it. Uh, but what's important, I think, for you, just as any coffee brewer at home, is to be aware of the water that you're using to brew your coffee. Now, the best step I think you can take, you know, you can go to the extent of, of crafting your own water. As we're doing here, we take distilled water, which is nothing but, uh, you know, H2O, no minerals in it and we add their minerals to create the right balance. While this is a concentrate, of course, we create the balance when we are ready to brew. So we can go to that extent, but I think what's important is that you find a good baseline. Uh, I found that simply starting with like, this is just, you know, crystal geyser, alpine spring water, whatever, you can brew a great cup of coffee with this. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't try to argue that this is the perfect balance of minerals, but it's a, it's a fine balance. I, I don't even know what it is, uh, if it falls exactly in the range of SCA's guidelines, if you follow that link. But I have tested out and brewed a lot of cups of coffee with just store-bought spring water. It doesn't have to be this brand. This just happens to be one that I got. Um, I've tried other brands as well. Uh, and we've done, we did that episode on water before. Start by doing this, because, you know, this costs a dollar. 
spend a dollar, brew your coffee with, with water that you know for sure is good for brewing, compare it to your home water, and then kind of go from there. What I do here, as I said, one of the problems I have is there's a lot of uh, chlorine in the water uh, in this building. I run my water through a charcoal filter, like a Brita filter in the fridge. Uh, I think I actually use a Pure, whatever. They're all the same thing. It's one of those like uh, containers that you know has the replaceable filter. It's a, just a charcoal-based filter. Uh, run your tap water through that. I find that for a lot of people, that's a really good solution. Uh, for me, that works. Uh, I think that's going to depend on the water source that you have as to whether that's a good solution. So. Uh, if you're completely unsure, start with the baseline. Start with like the spring water baseline. Compare it to the water that you usually use. If you like the spring water better, uh, maybe try the charcoal filter. If you don't like the charcoal filter compared to the spring water solution, you might decide, like if you really want to get into it, this is actually a pretty easy uh, to use and replicate system. Uh, you know, I've created 500 grams here. Uh, and when I make the brewing water, like every time I brew, because uh, I usually brew with about 500 grams, uh, you know, I'm going to use two grams of this. So I can make uh, 250. Wow, that took my brain too long. If I can make 250 brews with this, that's pretty good. And I could obviously make more of this concentrate at once. So this is not a lot of effort uh, to have like good quality water around. The only thing you would need to do is constantly uh, supply yourself with distilled water uh, with which to add your concentrated mineral water to. So that is like crafting water in a nutshell, um, a little bit on the importance of water when you brew. If you want to watch a bit more about uh, the quality of your water and how that can affect your brewing, I'll link to the Coffee Lovers Radio episode, which we had on the channel here a long time ago. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, but I highly recommend trying out this too. Like crafting your water is kind of cool. It's like a bit of a new experience. And uh, I think it's something you can really get into and have some fun. Uh, and again, there are a lot more recipes than just this one. This, I think, is just a basic like average recipe that will brew some good coffee for you. Um, but people get really specific with it and make water recipes specific to the coffees to pull out different aspects of the coffee or if they're doing espresso or brew or what have you. So there's a whole nother nerd level to this which we haven't even touched on. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a starting point. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, all the links to the recipe will be below the video. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. Uh, always happy to chat. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.